when I was giving a short course on civic ecology at Beijing Normal University. And I remember she was sitting towards the front on the left and she had purple hair. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so that was my first introduction to Braven. And she is a native of Xinjiang, which is in Shanxi province, and it's near this large city of Xi'an. So you might have heard of the Terracotta Warriors or maybe even seen them. And um, so that's the area where Braven grew up, but in a smaller city. Uh, she completed her bachelor's degree at Beijing Foreign Studies University in computer science. And uh, we've had a number of ventures together, Raven and I, along with me and Yue and Alex um, and Annie. And one of them uh, was conducting workshops in Hangzhou at the Botanical Gardens for environmental educators. And after that, we went hiking in the Yellow Mountains. And um, we even had some time for a little bit of karaoke at our hotel. And uh, Raven is excellent at karaoke. And also one of her hidden talents is making videos on TikTok. And back to that purple hair theme, like mm -hmm. she showed me one of her TikToks. And if you go, she goes like that, her hair changes to pink or purple or green or blue. It's very, very cool. So you never know what to expect. <laughs> anyway, so Braven has done some really incredible work training university clubs in environmental education and also creating an online national network of clubs where she does a lot of online training. And all this work has led her after she completes her degree, well before, maybe even before she completes her final, turns in her final thesis, to a job that she'll be assuming in August in student services and I think maybe some other activities also at Xiao Tong University in Xi'an. Um, and it's great because it'll be really near to our hometown and our family. So with that, I want to turn it over to Braven to give her thesis presentation. Thank you, Braven. And thanks everybody for coming. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Marianne, for this lovely introduction. And now I will start my uh, talk today. So in today's seminar, I will introduce China Campus Seminar Clubs and discuss their environmental actions. So first of all, I think Marianne already make a um, really uh, lovely introduction about myself. So I gained my bachelor's degree uh, in Beijing. I came to the Department of Natural Resources, studying environmental education with Professor Marianne Krasny. And what has led me here is basically because of my intense club experience, a four-year experience when I was an undergraduate student. And today I'm still a very active club initiative explorer, um, like have done, still have done a lot of things with my club friends and uh, including this this is work all right so the main question for this study is what environmental actions are taken by China campus environmental clubs um, and definitely uh, what are China campus on the club. So let's start with this background part. So environmental clubs are just one of the campus, club, uh, campus clubs in Chinese universities. Uh, what's special, what's politically special about those clubs in Chinese universities is their source of legitimacy. And one important organization, the umbrella and organization called Club Union, uh, supervise, like uh, are the affiliate, like, the clubs are all affiliated with this organization and club union is supervised by China Communist Youth League. So um, the clubs gain their legitimacy um, by following the regulations, uh, joining the assessments and getting education like devised by club union and also the uh, apply for approvals, fundings, and access to resources that a club union work sectioned on um, behalf of the university for the club's activities. Um, and also what's common among campus clubs in China are their personnel composition. So the majority uh, in the club are freshmen and there will be a small group of sophomore students as club leaders and sometimes they are also junior or higher grades of students as senior leaders and one or two faculty or staff as club advisor. Generally there will be 20 to 100 members in the China Campus Club. And specifically about 
campus in Rondo clubs, like over years, they have developed their uh, structure, uh, quite common among many different kinds of clubs, the old ones and new ones. So there are two major types. The first type is a function based. Um, that is one department serving for one specific function. For example, Department of Communication, they work on the social media platform, this is club. And uh, the other type is a program base. That is one department serve for one independent project. For example, Department of Environmental Education would bring environmental lectures to primary school or uh, middle schools. Um, and there are also two major types of activities in campus room the clubs. The, the, there are regular and flexible ones. So there are three examples of regular activities. Regular activities they repeat each year and the implementation process are basically standardized within the structure. Um, as this three uh, activities shows, they uh, literally repeat each term or week or semester. And the flexible activities, they are either come from the opportunities of student programs, for example, when, with a program on specific topic, the client member will go and investigate on the specific environmental issue, questions, and or the uh, such activities come from the corporations with the outside um, organizations. Um, for example, they will recycle these boxes with other uh, clubs together, which is initiated by some environmental NGOs that is not on campus, so basically by chance. Um, and the above is a brief introduction about China campus of clubs in Chinese higher education. Now I will start with uh, the other strand that China campus of clubs in Chinese environmental movement. So according to some work, there are seven types of environmental NGOs in China and student environmental associations are one of them. Um, the like, you know, the student, actually the student environmental associations are the earliest, like one of the earliest environmental NGOs in China, as you can see in this chart, um, it has its initial proliferation between 1990s, 2000s, and um, as commonly agreed in multiple literature, um, student environmental associations is also integral to the Chinese movement's development since they parallel with other environmental uh, organizations as well since mid 1990s. And such integral development have formed multiple interactions between environmental NGOs and the campus environmental clubs. So, uh, so first from the campus uh, environmental club side, they, uh, uh, some of them are even the origin of some local environmental NGOs and those NGOs also rely heavily on the sources of volunteers or talents from the clubs. They are uh, college students. And from the NGO side, they will provide supplies for clubs to participate in some environmental campaigns and also offer networking opportunities. Meanwhile, those clubs also will um, initiate their own networks in their own community. And one very significant uh, event is the 1996 first national green camp, which could be a green bomb among the young Chinese environmentalists. Um, it, uh, what what is about is it went to Yunnan province to save an endangered species and uh, its forest habitats. It succeeded and got widely spread all over China, uh, widely uh, reported. And after that, there have been many practical followers in different provinces, including environmental clubs. So the clubs hosted local camps during vacations in similar formats as the uh, National Green Camp, and they're like a package of common activities today. Uh, I think there is, a, uh, you know, there's in the past there should be some development process, but today they offer a package of common activities, including different um, formats and the organization recruitment processes are also similar uh, among different camps. So they're self-organized by those uh, host clubs and some are open for uh, students from nationwide club members, from nationwide clubs, uh, from regional clubs, or they're only private for the host clubs. 
Uh, okay, then that's a deduction about uh, China Campus Clubs in Chinese Around the Movement. Now let's go back again to this question, what amount of the actions are taken by China Campus Clubs? So I already introduced the second component. Now the theoretical component is the environmental action. And this concerns the theoretical framework of this uh, study. So about environmental action, uh, in English literature, I noticed that most of them are based in a Western context or of a Western perspectives. So, um, you know, uh, doing qualitative research, I'm quite aware of um, such contextual difference. So I uh, develop, like based on this literature, I develop a theoretical framework, uh, which intends to um, identify possible practices demonstrating the concept of environmental action while being open, uh, while being culturally open to China contests. So it's capturing environmental action now to accurately define that and and I uh, expect that it will work in a Chinese cultural context. Um, so uh, just briefly explaining the developing process is to start with keywords from different definitions, descriptions, examples about environmental action in those literature. And I categorize them um, into uh, three big uh, uh, big sets into three features. So the first feature, um, is called environmentally driven, um, means that there should be an environmental drive or motivation in the actor or an intended environmental impact in the action. The second feature is deliberate, uh, refers to the complex individual engagement, deliberate process such as decision making, uh, planning, so on, like in the processes. And the third feature is collective, um, includes a collective goals or a collective process in, uh, uh, in this uh, particularly uh, collective environmental actions. All right, and now with, after the record framework, I'm going to explain the methods of this study. Um, so still like again with this question, uh, initially I uh, used the very direct method to ins investigate this question uh, using uh, interviews. So, um, I using focus groups and interviews, uh, asking a very a straightforward interview question uh, to the club members, uh, what environmental actions that your club initiate, organize, or participate in. Uh, but like from this pilot project, two major issues arose. Uh, that the first one, I realized that oh, the environmental action and the Chinese words is probably not the the common word we often use and I could not really get like it seems that uh, members are not really answering about them to action sometimes feel like um, the whole process is not that productive a little bit distorted and also the contest issue like I feel like I'm also not very clear about how to come how to communicate this question in their context and the second issue is about my influence um, as a because I've been a senior club member, so I often dominate the conversation and also the participants' relationships as well. Because in the focus groups, there seems a hierarchy uh, among, uh, between the members, and their com the conversation are really limited in some cases. So, uh, according to these issues, I made two adjustments for my formal data collection. So, firstly, I revisit to the research questions, theoretical framework, and secondly, I turn to ethnographic methods. Okay, so I, uh, when I visit, after I revisiting the research question, I add a secondary um, question, what feature describe the context of China campus clubs before the primary question, what environmental actions are taken by China campus clubs? Um, and also um, the formal data collection design, like I also uh, design different methods for the two questions. The first question, what environmental actions are taken by China campus clubs? I chose summer camps, uh, summer club camps as a major field sites uh, because those camps are, you know, are uh, uh, traditional and big events for the clubs. They share common activities and those activities, activities are similar as the master ones. And interestingly, they also share this common identity as in the club. So I feel like it would be a, um, 
and do uh, alternative to the full semester or term uh, field work given the limited time. So which uh, summer camps I chose as field sites? I chose the uh, seven, 17 year green camp um, hosted by uh, uh, Huanqing Environmental Club of Yunnan University and uh, water, the first year water keeper camp organized by Green Origin Association of Zhejiang University. So the green camp uh, faces, uh, faces the club members from all over China. We have participants from 11 clubs, but the water camp only faces uh, its host club. Um, both the club, Huanqing and Green Origin, they have good reputation and they are like like the club models in the community of China campus of clubs. And also I intend to participate too, because you know, the 17 year and the first year, they could really provide meaningful comparisons for my study. Um, and I, uh, con I use the method of participant observation and collected uh, field materials in the summer uh, club camps, especially in the uh, field materials, the green camp has been super productive because uh, part of as part of the camp routines, we keep daily diaries, and after the camp, each member also writes reflections um, about their performance and their responsibilities. So uh, Yunnan camp has really been a big part of my data in this research. And about the secondary question. Uh, what features describe the contest China campus similar to clubs is kind of broader question. So I intend to use a broader uh, data sources, which are majorly um, draw, uh, draw on um, the online club networks. So those club networks are social media groups created by the clubs and they kind of have such online discussion records. So. The only discussion records are saved chat logs of the group discussions as a part of this uh, network routine um, on central topic. So multiple club members would join this discussion and high quality ones are even passed down like over years. So there are also discussions from five or two years ago that I can use for my research. So I feel like um, it's, it's really kind of uh, uh, help me inform the, uh, this question. Uh, about data analysis process, there are three stages. The first stage is preliminary analysis after the pilot project before the field work. Um, so as mentioned, it helped me make adjustments on research design. And during the field work, I conduct reflective analysis, such as reflective memos. And when all materials are ready, um, I've done coding analysis, which generates a final code system. So the final codes, for the secondary question, I got um, many codes here, and they generated from online discussion records and part of field data. And those codes um, are uh, for the primary question, and they're generated by uh, all of my field data. Okay, and now let's start with findings. Um, so the first finding definitely answers a uh, secondary question, uh, the broader one, what feature described the contents of China campus and the clubs? And here is the map. Um, I'm going to explain them one by one, but given the time, probably just, I will, I will only explain the highlights of each. Um, so there are four features reflective of Chinese higher education. Um, the first one being college students concerns the situation and collective identity, uh, as well as the cultural aspect of interactions among club members in China campus and the clubs. So first situation being college student, the schoolwork has been really important and even dominate their um, decisions uh, most of the time. Um, so as this code indicates, and another situation is being a college student that seems they feel like uh, they're uh, living on the campus and they're facing college students, they, their world is uh, defined by being college students. And from the situation to collective identity is like something internal, like, uh, like being a college student made them feel like uh, they are just college students, as this code said, they are not likely to make big, great stuff. However, uh, being college students, as 
like may also make them feel like they can only do more related to their campus. It's kind of uh, limiting, but also enabling that, you know, we can go farther, but we can still do well being a college student. And also the third point is kind of interesting because, you know, being college students, they always have a lot of interesting uh, popular cultures and in Marvel in clubs they also internalizes some popular cultures such as uh, this uh, quote describes that how they um, familiarize boys and girls in their clubs using this uh, cultures like popular among other college student groups. All right, and the second feature, reflective of Chinese higher education, it's about extracurricular fulfillment. It uh, refers to the role of club membership, activities, camps in meeting graduation requirements, leg uh, gaining uh, legitimacy and support from higher education. Uh, so there are two major stuff like uh, extracurricular credits as part of the higher education policy in graduation and uh, the higher education of also give these credits to the club activity that uh, either you organize them or participate in them you can gain this credits so it creates a very important incentive um, for being a student and the social practice program is something more recent as a formal pol policy for us uh, almost all Chinese universities it's as it's required the college Chinese college students to go out of the campus to do something practical related to the society um, so you, as you can see the two camps I participate in they, they are all uh, they all have an overlap with um, social practice program of their university. And the third feature is a resource access. So what resource is the uh, higher education resources? Uh, very straightforward, the natural uh, areas, public physical spaces, academic and professional resources are common in all higher education institutions, but especially in Chinese higher education is uh, actually without being on campus, like uh, being in the context of higher education, to access those uh, resources would be impossible. So those clubs must have the approval or have any major relationship so they can uh, access to these uh, resources, distinguish them from other kinds of organizations outside the campus. And the last feature, uh, I won't explain a lot, but higher education structure really concerns to kind of structure the top-down structure and tier structure. Uh, so you can say that examples are the top uh, communication channels and the peer clubs. Okay, and there are three features reflective of China uh, environmental movement of China uh, uh, in China campus of clubs. The first is connection to environmental NGOs. I will explain the three characteristics um, of this, their connection. So um, as mentioned before, 1996 Green Camp has been the Green Bomb. And uh, there are two major trends after that. The first is it develops into a formal NGO, uh, organized national green camps each year. And at the same time, there are also local practical followers uh, organizing local green camps, including the student clubs. So we can see from this case, it reflects the genealogically a close connection to environmental NGOs. Um, and in addition, the WWF China also uh, has a presence in the Yunnan Green Camp. It sponsors uh, the camp preparation and the members, members packages uh, during the camp. Um, however, you know, to my experience and um, observation, I feel like uh, besides something symbolic, there's not there's really not other direct interaction uh, happening there. So it also shows some kind of uh, symbolic connection of campus and clubs to environmental NGOs. And also, uh, 
besides being uh, genealogically close, uh, symbolic, such connection is also practically distance. So uh, still using the example of Yunnan Green Camp, like their relation to Green Camp, WWF, or uh, both not direct. Um, uh, they, they're not like, they don't have really direct interaction in practice. So uh, the characteristics is practically um, distant. And the second feature uh, reflective of Chinese American movement is about um, the content uh, of um, club activities and so on. So it's uh, environmentalist legacy as tradition. Um, I will uh, introduce club tradition, which includes the camp tradition. So the first example of club tradition is nature name, um, like um, the club members and the, uh, some NGO, like almost all the NGO people I knew, like they have a nature name. And like, I also remember most of them by nature name, not by their real name. We call each other by name. Name is definitely a cultural legacy from the involvement of clubs um, in Chinese um, movements. And the second example is about uh, those activities that are very common among different clubs that they're just uh, like replications of each other. But, you know, those activities of recycling, the campaigns of Earth Hour, the green mapping, um, they are all very closely related to um, those environmental campaigns, popular campaigns in Chinese movement in the past. Um, and also I will briefly tough on, touch on the camp tradition by two highlights. The first highlights about collectivism. So collectivism um, kind of refers to like um, the overall group as a collective in Yunnan Green Camp. The camp leader is really against the emergence of small groups. So small groups against the whole group is like only several people are really close to uh, to the other and they are exclusive to others outside the group and the camp leaders think that's not a good sign of collectivism and they always mention that this is a good practice and this is emphasized by early environmentalist uh, practices and also related to collectivism it's a spirit of suffering as you can see from those pictures it's about our uh, eating, <laughs> eating summer stuff uh, during Yunnan camp. So we have very limited food supply and we have slept on floor for uh, 10 nights. We live together, but the spirit suffering emphasizes that we as a group, we suffer together and that makes us a group. It is also closely related to early environmentalist practices, especially influenced by uh, green camp. Okay, so that's about the environmentalist legacy. And the last uh, feature uh, reflective of Chinese environmental movement is common environmentalism. Uh, there are three which can be all like compared with popular um, environmental campaigns like what's what's popular in those campaigns. So the first mass mobilization is very clear that one people can do much, but a group of people, more the more people involved, the more effective environmental protection could be. And the second about pragmatism. Uh, so it means um, no matter how low and how deep uh, you are, environmental protection is as long as you do it, you're doing that. This means as long as you act for something, there will be changes. It's quite supported by many club members in different online discussion records. And the third one, apparently about nature loving, nature name is a good example. And also Green Camp has a great emphasis on veneration, veneration for nature and they want to explore as, uh, environmental protection from nature. So it's also a very important belief for club members. So all these three, they are quite entwined with the development of Chinese war movement in China. Okay, and three more features uh, reflective of the uniqueness of China campus movement clubs. The first is about the membership impact that considers the membership as the most visible impact. Uh, as this quote says, 
like uh, the Iran Club sh like focus on influence already involved college students, then they can think about like other impacts. So uh, something touches on the idea of environmental action transformative learning stuff. And the second feature, it's it, I think it's the most interesting. It's about the dualistic club culture, and the two cultures are family culture and green culture. So what's a club culture first? I think this is a super classic um, description from a club member. So it says club culture is a self-realizing process via a series of environmental and team building activities. So uh, by these two kinds of activities, I actually noticed 18 different kinds of uh, club cultures under the category of family culture and green culture. So as you can see from these photos, um, those photos are all about family culture. It seems that it's apparent that family culture focuses on the relationships and interactions among the members making the club like a family. And the green culture, you can see from those pictures, um, the club members are practicing uh, environmental behaviors and expressing their environmental uh, attitudes by those common um, uh, common practices. So you can see clearing up the plates, plugging, making uh, chopsticks bags, and also, also about nature loving thing. They're all about the green culture having, happening in China campus environmental clubs. So family culture and the green culture, they're two cultures, but they're not um, independent from each other. They actually have a very um, complex interaction with with each other but overall perceived as positive uh, among club members as this uh, very classic code shows so they use this metaphor saying the green culture is the roots of an of the club because it's the environment of the club that's the mission and the trunk is a family culture so the family culture spreads green culture from branches to leaves and the leaves refers to the members so i think this really um like romantically explains uh, the uh, dualistic club culture in uh, the community of China campus and the clubs. And the third feature reflective of their uniqueness is the deep club networks, which highlights a role uh, of uh, significant friendships embedded in those club uh, networks. This is why I call it deep because there are really significant friendships uh, forming and also lasting for many years and even energizing more club networks. Okay, and ooh, I finished explaining each of these features. Hopefully you already got a picture of the contents of China campus and clubs and I will move on to the second part of finding about this question, what environmental actions are taken by China campus and the clubs. And based on my research, the answer is among their environmental actions, there are lost environmental actions. So um, before explaining lost environmental actions, one concept is uh, necessary uh, because it's the kind of the initial thoughts uh, uh, of uh, lost environmental action. It's called inconsistency. So I got this sense of inconsistency as early as in the pilot project that um, there's an inconsistency between the theoretical framework, uh, the, the, the concept of environmental action and environmental activities of clubs. Um, and the theoretical framework really helped me to identify where inconsistency occurs. So first, with this collective, you can see like kind of they think negatively about uh, their relationships with the clubs, deliberate, not deliberate, they're confused, they're careless, and the plans and decisions are skipped, and the environmentally driven is just uh, meaning that the environment disappears in their environmental action in, in some cases. So uh, this is about inconsistency. However, I also realized that the inconsistency is just a subjective comparison between the theoretical framework and the empirical observation. So in order to reflect club members' perspective, um, I 
went through the data coded inconsistency and found that the words close to the meaning of lost has been frequently used by club members. So I replaced lost, so I replaced inconsistency with lost of the action and further coding reviewed three categories that are meaningful to club members. There are what's to be done, what's being done, and what has been done. And there are three themes to the three categories. Um, the first theme is ambiguity. So the ambiguity of lost environment action has two aspects. Uh, we'll explain the highlights of each aspect. So the first aspect, what has ambiguity? Um, according to this quote, the activity formats has ambiguity because they, it's their first time doing that. They don't know what to prepare, what to do, like what this activity look like. And secondly, about the outcomes, like the CAM members see really confused about what they're going to produce. They're, they don't know what they're going forward. So that's also caused such ambiguity. And also about the necessary knowledge. So the necessary knowledge in this case concerns the professional knowledge environmental protection and uh, local knowledge because they went to this uh, specific location. Um, so this code also reflects that idea that they seem not knowing what to ask even if they only have the passion for environmental protection. Okay, and um, the second aspect is under what conditions ambiguity occurs. Um, so one is the big involvement. I found that the uh, camp members really um, told that um, they felt ambiguous about the whole activity after they had this weak involvement that they felt like they did nothing for that. Um, and also other purposes than environmental protection also uh, kind of led to such ambiguity because, you know, some members come just for traveling or others, they don't really care what's this activity going forward. They're, they don't care about the details. This also caused the ambiguity. Okay, and the second category, what's being done? The theme is called deviation. Um, and I will explain two conditions where deviation occurs. So during the environmental communication activity, um, like as this quote shows, and also my experience as well, since we're in the same group. So um, uh, they're kind of compromising their environmental impact by narrow down the audiences because they, they, they just want to find a quick solution to find, to uh, interact with people, but they don't really, like, they kind of think less about uh, their initial goal of like doing environmental communications broader as possible. And second is an expected gaps differently from the compromises stuff because they don't have time time to make compromises. So samely in the communication activity, they realized that their environmental actions for the tourists were, were not appropriate, uh, but they don't have to change or something. So I had to carry on with these questions and there is a strong sense of deviation from their initial goals, their initial plans and the initial efforts as well. Uh, so, uh, in some sense really disappoint some camp members. And the last category, what has been done, uh, majorly from camp members' reflections on their camp experience, uh, revealing the sense of loss of quality, also pointing to the sense of le less satisfaction with the camp experience as well, with their environmental actions as well. So what has caused, or what has loss of quality? Um, the first is their activities. So many CAM members saying that um, they feel like their uh, environmental activities are not that impressive, not that deep. So they feel like not that mean meaningful as well. Um, it reveals such loss of quality. Um, similarly, um, about the time spent as well, like CAM members in their reflections pointed out um, the time spent with those environmental activities or their environmental action also um, less deeper and also too intense. I feel like they're uh, not really satisfied with the uh, time spent. And uh, the third, 
part that has lots of quality and is very significant uh, aspect is about the relationship. So as I mentioned, the collectiveness is very important for a camp, but it shows that um, those camp members are not very satisfied with how their collective performed, um, how the awareness grow like uh, among the camp members during the camp. So that's all about the theme of loss of quality. All right, so I've already explained two findings for the two uh, questions with multiple data sources. And the uh, first uh, finding for secondary question, lay out the context for the primary question. They all helped me to do uh, the further discussion on uh, the findings of this research. All right, so um, yeah, so first definitely um, the first finding helped me understand the context China campus, uh, you know, the clubs even deeper because I not only um, see uh, the par what part of Chinese higher education context, what part of Chinese vampirism are working differently on the campus of the class, but also the most importantly, I see the unique space created by those clubs, like they build their own meanings and impacts under heavy influence from the two sides. And the one significant thing is a dualist club culture, which means that family and the green culture are inseparable. Um, and, you know, the club culture really connects the club members and the club. It is something both happening inside the club members' mind and their practices. So I think there definitely should be a connection, um, um, like in body by those club cultures as this double layer connection, uh, have double layers respectively family and grain. Um, and further, I relate this interpretation to the second finding of lost environmental action. As I uh, also reviewed the data, of loss and robot action, there is a common trend emerged that is a disconnection between club members and the club or camp. For example, the club members think negatively about their group, about uh, have a negative impression about environmental protection, and also um, they may follow they follow the group without thinking uh, about their roles and goals and so on, all of which implied a broken family layer, a broken green layer, or both. So I think um, um, because my, like, uh, my data, like, reviews, there's a disconnection which led to loss and wrongful action. So I think this double la broken double layer uh, connection is also uh, similarly like working in the same way that has led to such lost environmental action. Um, so this is how I understood lost environmental action and based on the findings in this specific context of China campus and the clubs, but it's also definitely still have broader implications for the field, especially on the study on social relationships, interactions, environmental activism. So in some literature, they mentioned some typical social relationships that motivating uh, environmental action, like um, like many people, new friends, role models. But I think the degree of such relationships and interactions are seldom mentioned or discussed. For example, how um, how close they are, how significant the relationships are, is um, is missed somehow. Um, but I think in my study, the family culture of China campus and clubs really. Um, provides insights for this question, um, shows the degree of the relationship among clubs, because this code perfectly shows like the deep relationship relates to uh, their motivation uh, to carry on with environmental protection. And in addition, uh, there's also not many literature linking social relationships and interactions with environmental meaning. But uh, in my study, the double layer connection in China campus environmental clubs, I think meaningfully uh, has hit on, on this points as this quote shows like it's just links uh, it's reviews the inseparable nature of family culture and um, the original heart of environmental protection yeah it may sound a little bit ideal ideal but it has indeed um, made the 
temps normal cloths survived in the past three decades. Even if my research has shown there are disconnections, there are lost um, environmental actions, which I mean, indeed, there are more challenges those clubs are facing today. But um, I think they are not necessarily all bad signs. Um, I still believe they still need more uh, efforts to understand uh, what's happening with those young environmentalists and definitely the uh, understanding, the efforts to understand our um, young future next generation of environmentalists should never stop. Okay, so um, I finished the main content of the seminar today about my thesis. Um, I just want to mention the limitations of my research. So just one thing to emphasize is the uh, clubs here I uh, uh, talked about are the general traditional environmental protection clubs. They are not the single kind of environmental clubs. In China, there are still other kinds and they're more recent. So definitely if there are more Document, documentations and research will uh, complete the picture of China campus and clubs in China. And there are the citations. And lastly, acknowledgement. I really want to thank you, my committee members. They have support, extraordinary support for my thesis. Um, just, uh, that's so great. And um, also grateful for my lab, for my club friends in China. Special thanks to all those club partners have helped me and my club co uh, collaborators as well. They're, having a super great support for this work. And thank you so much for your listening. <laughs> if you have any questions, let me see what I have used. Great, we still have two minutes left. Great. I've used the 45 minutes in total. <laughs> well, we started seven minutes late, so you did a great oh, job. Okay, um, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Graven. That was really interesting to help us understand something that's really hard for us to, to learn about, which is, um, you know, campus life, campus clubs, environmental clubs in China. And also thank you for your really interesting insights. I know you did a lot of reflection and, and a lot of thinking to come to where you are. So what I'd like to do is open it up to questions and especially, um, you know, I think we're a small enough group that you can unmute yourself, but I noticed some people that aren't in our lab or on the call, um, like Janelle and Pat. So uh, Dr. Sullivan, if you have any questions, you're usually the first person. If we were doing this in Ferno Hall, I know you would be the first person to have a question. I see you just unmuted yourself, so. Oh, I'm good. I'm listening. Pardon? Are you? I'm, I'm good. I, okay. I, I've been listening. I'm just okay. I'm continuing to listen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so I hate to put you on the spot. Janelle, did you have any um, thing you wanted to add or? Comments, observations? Okay, so Alex, looks like- yeah, Can I ask a question? So uh, Braven, I've seen you presented, uh, uh, presenting um, so many presentations before this many times, and <laughs> it's just amazing to see the growth from where you started two years ago and where you <laughs> finished. That's really amazing. So. Um, I have a question. Well, first, congratulations, not only on finishing your MS, but also on getting a position in Xi'an Jiantong University. So I wonder what you've learned through your research about uh, clubs and how they interact with families and with uh, university culture. How are you going to apply it or maybe use it in your future uh, um, uh, work? Yeah. whether in this immediate university or maybe in the far future. <laughs> Thank you, Alice. That's a great question. Actually, I already have plans going on. So actually, my future job won't uh, directly working with environmental clubs. But first of all, as I will work in student career and entrepreneurship, I definitely have a lot of uh, opportunities to direct, like using my insights from environmental clubs to direct more college students into environmental fields. Um, that's one thing. And secondly, specifically with environmental clubs, like uh, Marion and Sophia knows I'm still, I'm also been doing a small project that is developing an uh, online course for the prospective uh, club leaders, like from all over China. Like I 
really hope like my because my work really informed me of this systematic knowledge about China campus around the clubs and I feel like the community of China campus around the clubs they also um, may learn more from such knowledge continuing being more mobilized by such knowledge so I think such an online course would be uh, very meaningful and I expect to uh, realize this plan in the upcoming year. So hopefully next year, same time today, I will let you know how many uh, those club members will be involved in this plan and as a continuing effort from my thesis to uh, the China campus around the clubs. Thank you. Thank you, Braven, and good luck with your future online course. Like, <laughs> given you. your enthusiasm and ability to connect with uh, student clubs and uh, cult student culture in China, I'm sure you're going to have a really huge and positive impact. And plus, you know, everything that you've learned at Cornell and uh, your research, um, all the frameworks that now you put into practice. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, and also uh, expect maybe if I uh, realize that plan, also uh, look forward to sharing my progress with you, <laughs> like by zooming our uh, sharing what's going on because you know we're doing similar stuff in different locations, sharing common mission. That's super great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, thanks, Alex. Anybody else have uh, many questions? Feel free to unmute yourself. Hi, Brave, it's me. Yeah. So Hello. in your uh, slide, there is, a, there is a term called peak culture. So I was curious about what is a peak, peak culture. Oh, peak culture. Okay, yeah. let me go to that page. So they're, they're still so interesting about those club cultures. Um, peak culture is just a metaphor. So those club members say environmental action, environmental protection is hard work uh, and it's challenging, but they should not be too smart to avoid the challenge, the difficulty. They should like peak, like, um, I don't know, it's, it's maybe a little bit appropriate, like uh, unjust for pigs, but they just use pig, like we're like pig, uh, we're like pigs, we're as stupid as pigs. So for uh, the cause of environmental action, we need to like pig just to go forward, just to uh, use our like power to implement that. So it's pig culture. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like a lot of activity a lot of action, but not really reflective action. Is that what you're saying? Um, could you pardon? Okay. So I'm, I'm not quite sure I understood. So with pig culture, like I'm thinking, I think you said that pigs just go forward, like they just eat, they have a lot, they're just like going like this all the time, and, but maybe they're not thinking. So is that sort of what you're saying? There's a lot of activity, but not a lot of reflection? Um, no, I don't think so. They say just, um, um, I, there's a nuance thing here. They're touching on the good side of the pig because pig has been like, have been, you know, uh, honest. They have been go one step by one step. So they're doing that seriously. And the stupid is also quoted. It's not that without reflection, they say they, um, they say they, they are insisting on this cause. Just they want to emphasize their per, 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 uh, persistence on the environmental cause, not really on other side. But Mary, you really um, points out an interesting point here about the pig culture. I think, yeah, maybe what you say really makes sense. This part, probably I really need to investigate deeper with this culture. For example, the pig culture kind of also give me a sense that they're saying, like they're just doing those things as maybe uh, from the past, from the senior members, just uh, they, they do that. They don't have to be too smart to think too much or something. That's a really important point. Thank you, Mary. I remember that. I have maybe, a, a, maybe an American equivalent could be like action biased. So it doesn't mean that you don't reflect, but you are quick to act. You don't sit on things and just watch for too long. You know that action is urgent. You have to do. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, like like people like you joined the, the this environmental clubs and then you... Oh, oh, 
I'm muted. So, okay, so like like the cl uh, community club members like you, like you changed from computer science to natural science, natural resources in remote education. I just wonder, do you have a sense of how many of those club members, uh, you know, they actually go for the environmental field for the career after participating in this environmental clubs? And uh, in, in other words, like uh, what is like long-term impact of those environmental clubs on the, the members' uh, future career? Yeah, that's a very interesting topic. And I think definitely needs more um, details, deeper investigation on that. So actually, as I mentioned here to the resource here is about members majors. The, I think um, most of the club members, they have an environmental related majors because that sounds like being a college student, they feel like, um, join this environmental club could help them advance their major learning. But there are definitely also other majors, especially my university does not have an environmental major. All of the club members in my club in Beijing Foreign Studies University are not environmental major. And really, I think many of them consider the environmental field as their future direction, especially there are some, like, I already know many of them. So I feel like um, if, one, if we want to investigate this question, definitely we should first um, um, like distinct, like different types of universities, especially in uh, this university that's not have an environmental major, such clubs kind of really complement the environmental major and have a more, you know, more deep long-term impact on this club members, since this is the only place they can learn and go forward with environmental protection. But with, but in those universities having environmental majors, like those environmental clubs already occupied by those students of the relevant majors, maybe not that many opportunities for other majors. So that would be one trick if want to investigate this topic further. But that's that would be a really interesting thing to think about. And I think that's also relative to my future job as well, like for student career development offices as well. That's definitely one thing I would love to observe on my position. <laughs> thank you. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Hey, Braven, this is Annie. Great job. Hi, Danny. <laughs> and I, I came in a little bit late, um, and so you may, I ap apologies if you, if you talked about this in the beginning, um, uh, but I'm curious about those, the themes that you have of the, the deviance and the, um, yeah, those lost environmental action themes. Mm hmm sure. Um, there we go, ambiguity, deviation, and loss of quality. I was wondering whether you think that those those might generalize out to other club types also. Um, so if there are mm. clubs doing different kinds of activities on campus and whether it's like a specific to environmental clubs or whether you think all students, well, not all, but many clubs might experience similar um, misgivings about their actions. Yeah, sure, definitely. That's a good question too. So I believe definitely the such situation like lost action since there are not only environmental uh, action, there are also other kinds of, for example, um, helping the elders, helping the children, helping the poverty. There are also other, you know, social actions going on. But I think, yeah, before uh, kind of applying such uh, lost action to other types of clubs that may similar with taking actions as well. But we may also kind of distinguish environmental issues with other issues. So I remember one discussion between me and some club members that we're talking about because there are some volunteer associations there, like environmental issues, just the one type of volunteer uh, thing they do. They also volunteer other stuff, for example, the Olympic games, uh, other kind of stuff. And also sometimes they go to poverty, uh, uh, like poor areas to help children at the local. So uh, we think that what's special about environmental action, that's what distinguish environmental clubs is the environmental issues for them is not that direct, like, um, like if you interact with the elder, with the children, you gain immediate uh, feedback from those people, you will see how meaningful your work is. But in campus or the clubs, it seems that 
So you can see the, I think there is a bigger emphasis on, on family most of time on clubs. And I think the environmental clubs is only clubs developed the family culture because the environmental issue sometimes it's just, it's not that tangible as the other issues interacting directly with people. It's kind of, they look forward for some environmental changes, but you know, um, it's sometimes a little bit distant. It's hard, it needs long-term engagement. So, but they still want to insist on this single one. So um, they create their culture. So I think if they're being lost, they're also being lost as much relates to the nature of environmental issues itself, like for those clubs. This is how uh, they lost the environmental action would differ from other lost actions in other types of student clubs. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, thank you, Braven. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you, everybody. I think we're gonna just go down to our smaller group of Braven, Dr. Viennes, <laughs> and Danny, <laughs> and myself. And so, um, getting a few congratulations there in the chat, Braven. Mm -hmm. um, so, Thanks everybody for coming on the call and um, yeah, have a nice afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody. Thank Good you. job. Bye. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Congratulations. Thank you, Elena. Thank you. All right. Great job. Nice Thank job. you. And you did, I mean, Braven, you didn't read, right? Yeah, I didn't read. I'm impressed by my English just now. <laughs> yeah, you did great. Yeah, because before when we practiced, Sophia, she, she was reading it. <laughs> yeah. And looking down the whole time. <laughs> and this was like so much better, so much more dynamic and interesting and engaging. So thank yeah. you for risking that because I know it was not, you know, the way you would have gone without us insisting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yesterday I spent all my, all, I almost spent the whole day practicing, uh, like changing slides, changing my uh, contents, and uh, maybe I'll, I even practice in my dreams. But it's all uh, worth it. I'm so happy that I completed. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not surprised because you would do the same <laughs> when you would come visit me. <laughs> very, 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 um, yeah, fluid and with ease. Right, talking yeah. about your ideas. So. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, so I just for that, so I'm, I'm not surprised at all. You did Thank a great you. Job. Thank yeah. you. So, Sophia, is it okay? Braven's still recording. Do you want to still record, Braven? Um, I will stop recording. Okay.